Hi guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video of a vintage pachinko machine. Uh, if you enjoy these um, short videos, I would encourage you to click on the subscribe bu uh, button down below. Um, it is a very nice uh, feeling to have subscribers, to know people appreciate what you do. And also, I really enjoy the comments that uh, folks have sent in. Uh, either telling me that they had a machine just like the one that I made a video of or on some of my instructional videos people have uh, Said it really helped them, you know, do their restorations and things like that. So uh, please keep the comments coming I love them and if you haven't already been there magic pachinko restorations.com uh, a lot of information there So this is a 1972 Oko Moriaki Victory machine this is a customer's machine, and we decided uh, when we talked that I was not going to do a playfield restoration on it. Uh, this this playfield is uh, rather unique. I've never seen one like this before. Um, it's actually a wine decanter, a wine glass, a couple other wine glasses. There's not a lot of color in it, so you didn't have the the blues and the oranges and the yellows that would fade. And there was uh, literally no water damage on this playfield, so we opted not to change the playfield nor pull the nails. The nails uh, really didn't have a lot of tarnish on them, uh, like some machines. Some machines, the nails are, are dark brown. Uh, these still had the, the brassy look to them. So um, from a cleaning perspective, everything came off except the nails and rails. That allowed me to get in and clean the, the playfield was very dirty. Um, I got all of that cleaned up. Um, quite often, uh, red paint, for whatever reason, red paint did not hold up well. Whatever they used for red just would flake off. Uh, so I repainted this. Uh, these have silver foil, or the silver um, highlights on them. I have a silver foil transfer that I use to, to bring them back. Um, this one had the yellow center, uh, so I painted these to match. So it's a, it's a pretty machine. This is all aluminum in here. This was uh, very dirty and, and crummy, but it, uh, fortunately aluminum cleans up pretty well. So it looks pretty nice. The chrome frame was in good shape, so that cleaned up well. I did do the uh, restoration of the frame. So the frame gets all taken apart. All the rust gets taken off of the hardware. The boards get planed and sanded real well. Uh, two coats of polyurethane. And I also uh, sanded down in polyurethane the main playboard here, uh, obviously once I got all the cuts off and got all of them clean. So with all of the restorations that I do, I include a 12 volt power supply. You just plug it in. And when you plug it in, you should see if somewhere on your machine a light would come on. Uh, this signifies there either is not enough or in this case there are no pachinko balls in the machine. And it's uh, run by a little micro switch right here. So when the weight of the balls comes down, it would turn that light off. All right. So <clears throat> this machine has got a, 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 I really like this feature. A couple of things on the machine that are, are a little bit different. But I like this feature. This is the ball dump lock. Uh, all machines have this. And with this one, you push over to the left with the little red button. And it interlocks uh, and it keeps the, the the platform here so that when the balls go down through around they, they will go into the turn or I'm sorry into the jackpot uh, if this is released then the balls would come around and, and go down the exit chute and exit the machine so that's how you would clean the balls out of the machine uh, if you're going to move it or something like that so when you go to, to set this machine up first thing you want to do is check this push it to the left and make sure it's latched um, if it's not latched, balls will go everywhere, but you'll find that out quick enough. The other thing that you want to check um, prior to playing the game for the first time is that your seesaw, which is inside of this chamber, is in the correct position. The correct position for a seesaw is this, this direction, up at the right end, low at the left end, rather than this way. It, it does tip, that's why it's called a seesaw, but you want it to start this way. So this little tab right here, when you push up on it, ensures that it brings this end up. So that's the proper starting position. So check this, check your seesaw, and then you're set and ready to load balls into the machine. 
Most pachinko machines require at least 300 to 500 pachinko balls. You want to make sure that they're, they're new and clean. You never want to use um, dirty or uh, pachinko balls that have rust. A lot of people ask me, can I clean the balls? Um, yes, you can. You can get the rust off, but the problem is, is that the plating um, has broken down on any ball that rusts, and it will rust again. So um, as soon as I see rust on a pachinko ball, it, I just put it in my uh, metal recycling bucket and uh, don't worry about it. So I, I would say buy new ones. Uh, most pachinko machines can handle almost a thousand pachinko balls. So uh, depends on how many you want to buy, but you should have at least three to five hundred in this upper mm -hmm. hopper. So when you when you go to load this, um, I don't know how many fit in here. I think four or five hundred fit in here. Uh, you want to put in 90% of them up in this hopper. So. so now the balls are uh, full here, cued all the way down and around and, and into the jackpot. This has now uh, been lifted off of the micro switch so that the light is off. So you're going to need something similar to this that will fit right here. Uh, the, a winning ball is going to drop out of the machine through this little chute, and the losing balls drop out of the machine down the bigger chute. So you need something similar to this. It doesn't have to be an official box. It can be anything. It can be a cardboard box, a wood box, a Tupperware bowl. It doesn't make any difference. It's just something to catch the balls, and then you're going to eventually bring them back up and put them in the upper hopper. So let's get this turned around, and we'll launch some balls. So the player's going to load balls here and start to launch. thing I'm sure you noticed is we only got one win with all of those balls. Um, I, I try to set the, the nails so that it's relatively easy to win on these machines. I mean, I want you as the, a player owner to, to have fun and win a lot. But suffice to say that when the tulips are closed, it's a much smaller target um, to get a ball into. So allow me to show you what happens when you go into the center uh, feature. It, the ball will drop straight down through and open this tulip. If you go into the center tulip or the center feature and stay on the left side, internally it'll open this tulip and the same on the other side, it'll open this tulip. So now that the tulips are open, you'll see that we're, I'm going to win a lot more. stuck in there. I'll have to get that out. So that's the way it works. It's a, a very pretty machine. I hope you're happy with it and uh, you'll enjoy it for many years to come. Thanks.